So when you start thinking about the program, uh, when you first uh, uh, start opening up the, the program, the, the computer, the computer turns on, you open up uh, the uh, program will show up, you start looking through it. What is the program going to tell you? Well, it's going to have a bunch of sort of indis individual rules, uh, things like uh, about how tall the ceilings are and all that. None of that is particularly important, but then there's a few key pieces in there that you have to read through to find what those key pieces are. So those I would refer to as kind of the specialty moments. Like what are the specialty things that are about this particular uh, vignette that uh, make it particular to this? So um, maybe uh, all rooms have to be connected to the corridor. You can't go through another room to get to a corridor, except maybe the locker rooms, you can go through the gymnasium to get to the corridor, something like that, right? That would be a sort of a specialty issue that you've got to be looking out for uh, because it has to do specifically with this particular vignette. Uh, but the main thing you're going to be sort of scanning down through the program for is what is it, what are the, what are the rooms, what, what's the point of the rooms, but then what's their size, which ones need to be near which other ones, uh, which ones need to be the employee entrance, uh, which one needs to be near the view, uh, any of those kinds of little special moments uh, that would allow you to start putting together this information. So one of the things you have to start looking for is what I always refer to as tricky wording. So tricky wording would be something like, uh, this room needs to be near the other room. So let's say a receptionist uh, office needs to be near the director's, um, the executive director's office. Well, what does near mean? Um, those are the kinds of things you want to get used to kind of as you try it out a few times, you'll start getting a feel for it. There's going to be things like next to, near, uh, uh, visual control of. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways of saying something can be near something else. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we, as we go along. And then one of the things that I'm going to mention a couple of times is you have to find a way to take notes. Find your way to take notes. So I'm showing an example here of using a matrix. Uh, and then filling in the information. Some people actually just literally write, rewrite the whole program out, and that's the best way for them uh, to assimilate the information. Uh, that seems a little crazy to me, but if it works for you, that's great. Other people don't write anything out on the scratch paper. They just, uh, they just flip back and forth from the screens, and they read it. Uh, they, when they see something important, they, they flip back to the drawing page and then do whatever that, that drawing says, and then they flip back. Uh, to the program page. Most people I've talked to find that a little confusing. This, it always being digital, it's a little hard to find your place again when you move uh, back onto the program uh, sheets and the code sheets. So uh, my suggestion is you assume that you're going to be writing something out. And if you don't like it, then find another way. But find your system for taking notes. You want this to be when the computer starts and the program starts going, you want to know exactly what you're going to do. Uh, you want to have your system ready and just know how to start. So you want to practice not just using the program, but how you're going to actually take your notes. A couple of other sort of quick and easy things that are very important and useful. Um, one of them is there's going to be a lot of things. There's going to be all these different rooms. There's going to be you know, 20 or 30 rooms that are listed. And each one is going to say, you know, one will say, uh, three classrooms at 400 square feet and uh, two art rooms at uh, 500 square feet and blah, blah, blah. It'll go through a whole series of these different things. Uh, when you see that, it's not terribly useful to you to think of that as 400 square feet or 500 square feet. You should, in your brain, just immediately translate that to a floor plan thought. So to me, when I see 400 square feet, I actually immediately think of 20 by 20. When I see 500 square feet, I immediately think of 20 by 25, 315 by 20, right? Now, it doesn't mean that that has to be the shape of the room in the end. It's just that that's going to give you a visual cue to understand the scale. And that uh, you might start noticing that, oh, well, let's see, this 400, this 300, this 500, I can do this at 20 feet wide and that's going to all match together. And then I realize that those three rooms are 20 by 55. Right, that's something that I can, uh, uh, um, excuse me, 20 by 60, um, sorry about that. Uh, um, that's something that uh, you can do very fast uh, on the fly uh, without having to think about it, 
But if you're sitting there having to draw those out in order to understand how big something is, you're wasting time. And then obviously there are other shapes that will get you that same, uh, same square footage. So 16 by 25 would also get you that 400 square feet, uh, that 400 square foot number. Uh, so it's not that you can't move and change those things. You just want to have a sense of the scale of it so you can move, move quickly. Mm -hmm.